Here's a funny thing about instrument flying. In training, we fly every approach as if we're in conditions that look like this, at ceiling and visibility minimums. Yet most of our IFR flights will end in conditions that are more like this, with the airport in VFR conditions. Here we are descending into Cleveland, bound for Hopkins International, the big Bravo airport. The clouds are a bit low, but it's a VFR day with good visibility. When we began our descent into the area from the east, with our destination to the southwest, we were initially on a heading of 270 when ATC gave us the following instruction. Cessna 34 Hotel, turn left, heading 220, vector for visual approach, runway 24 left, Cleveland Hopkins Airport. If the weather conditions at the airport are VFR, in other words, ceilings are at least 1,000 feet and visibility is at least three statute miles, the controller can decide to alleviate some of their workload and yours as pilot by assigning a visual approach. Visual approaches shorten flight paths to the airport and can relieve some of the separation responsibilities from the controller. As the name suggests, a visual approach is a clearance to proceed to the airport and land visually without having to reference any instrument guidance. So we're told to expect the visual approach, but how do you brief a visual approach? There's no approach plate for this, so let's pull up a plate that we do have for runway 24 left, the ILS. We can brief the items on this chart that we would want to know for arriving at an airport on a VFR flight, like runway landing distance and elevation and frequencies. We can glance at the missed procedure, but a visual approach doesn't have a missed approach. We'll need to let Tower know as soon as possible if we have to do a go around and follow their instructions. At a non-towered field, we'd need to remain clear of clouds and contact ATC as soon as we can. In scenarios where we don't have communication or in case of lost communications, we'll want to know the minimum safe altitude, 3,100 feet here, so we know where we can safely climb to in the absence of any instruction. Also, just because it's a visual approach doesn't mean we're VFR and our IFR is canceled. We're still under IFR, so the cloud clearance requirements for whatever airspace we're in don't apply. Now, even though we're not flying the ILS, it's a good idea to load up the procedure into our instruments. The FAA recommends using available nav aids like this for lateral and vertical guidance, as well as to ensure we're lining up with the right runway at the right airport. The annals of incident reports are filled with instances of aircraft which almost or which actually did manage to land at the wrong airport during a visual approach. This scenario we're looking at here in Northeast Ohio is a perfect illustration of how this can happen. Here we're approaching the International Airport, Hopkins, from the Northeast. But directly in front of us is the smaller Class Delta Airport, Burke Lakefront, sitting right on the shores of Lake Erie. We have to report that we have our destination airport in sight prior to being able to get clearance with a visual approach. So if we haven't reported yet, ATC will do its best to point us in the right direction. Cessna 34 Hotel, Burke Lakefront Airport is at 12 o'clock, 5 miles. Cleveland Hopkins Airport is at 1 o'clock, 1, 3 miles. Report Cleveland Hopkins in sight. So they'll call out both fields to help us out. Even though it's VFR, it's a bit marginal up at this altitude, which is why we filed IFR in the first place, probably. We have a look and can obviously see Burke Lakefront right in front of us, but need to look a bit further to see the parallel runways of Hopkins International a bit off the lake. It's scenarios like these that cause ATC to point out the right and wrong airport to us, and why we should overlay some navigational aid to augment our visual cues on the approach. Once we're clear that we see our destination airport, we'll let approach know. Cessna 34 Hotel is Cleveland Hopkins Airport in sight. And they'll give us our clearance. Cessna 34 Hotel, cleared visual approach, runway 24 left. If we're not able to report the airport in sight, but the conditions at the field still warrant visual approaches, ATC may still be able to issue us a clearance for one. Here we'll say we're approaching from the east, with the localizer for runway 24 left off to our right. The visibility is 6 statute miles, still VFR and sufficient for a visual approach, but we won't gain sight of the airport from this distance. Another aircraft though is on a straight in for the same runway. ATC will issue a traffic advisory. Cessna 34 Hotel, traffic 2 o'clock, 3 miles, a Cessna caravan, 4,000 feet, southwest bound. We can't see that airport, but we have plenty enough visibility to spark that traffic. So when we let approach know this, they'll come back with, Cessna 34 Hotel reference that traffic, number two, cleared visual approach, runway 24 left. So we're now cleared for the visual by following the Cessna caravan in front of us. 
we'll be able to keep them in sight until we gain sight of the runway. They land and we get our landing clearance from the tower. When we're on a visual approach like this, we as pilots assume responsibility for traffic separation and obstruction clearance that ATC usually has under IFR. At Cleveland Hopkins, they may be conducting parallel approaches with jets landing on 24 right and us putzing along for 24 left. As another fast mover comes up to overtake us for 24 right, we'll hear the tower call out. Cessna 34 Hotel, traffic is an Airbus A320 on the parallel approach, reported in sight. We call it in by saying, traffic in sight, we'll maintain visual separation 34 Hotel. And ATC comes back approved. We need to let them know that we both have the aircraft in sight and we'll maintain visual separation with that traffic, meaning we'll do our very best not to hit it in order to assume this responsibility. ATC still has other separation requirements to follow, such as wake turbulence separation, and they can't let us maintain visual separation with a super heavy like an A380. Visual approaches don't have procedure charts, but some visual procedures at larger airports, which are used for environmental or noise considerations called charted visual flight procedures, do have approach plates. This is the river visual approach to runway 19 at Washington National. This procedure keeps aircraft landing south at National over the Potomac River to reduce noise on either side and to avoid overflight of the prohibited areas in the capital. The approach plate lists the route to follow, landmarks along the way, and altitudes at specific points along the route. The river visual concludes with overflight of a series of bridges across the Potomac and an abrupt right turn onto short final after passing the 14th Street Bridge. These charted visual procedures are designed primarily for turbojet aircraft. Finally, let's talk about an approach you should really only see and think about in training. It's the contact approach. Here we are approaching Kent Island in Maryland, and let's say the visibility is just awful. One statute mile. We're IFR and we're inbound for Bay Bridge Airport just at the water's edge there. But we really don't want to spend all that fuel in the extra 10 or 15 minutes we'll need getting set up for a full instrument approach. We know this area really well though. You know how you know your old neighborhood so well that when you're given directions you don't use street names or intersections, but say something like, make a left at the third Dunkin' Donuts. That's kind of how we navigate around this part of Maryland. So we can request what's called a contact approach. If the ground visibility is at least one statute mile and the destination airport has an instrument approach procedure, we can ask for this. And we'll have to ask. ATC has to play it coy and can't initiate the contact approach for us. The way it'll work is we'll reference ground contact, such as Route 50 just to our right here, and follow that all the way into the airport. What could go wrong, huh? Sometimes this type of approach is called legalized scud running because it allows the pilot to fly in very marginal conditions, looking just at ground references, which may only be visible if you're right over them. Needless to say, this operation carries a high risk, which can be avoided by simply executing the published instrument approach. In your IFR training and check ride, you'll be flying each approach down to the minimums. But remember that most of your approaches will be in marginal or VFR conditions in the real world, so it's not a bad idea to mix in some visual approaches on purpose so you're not too thrown off by them. Did you like this video? You're going to love Flight Insight IFR Ground School. Hours and hours of videos just like this, as well as hundreds of practice test questions based on the real thing with instructor feedback. Head on over to flight-insight.com slash IFR right now.